and here. And once you've gone through that whole process, it just naturally lowers your blood pressure a little bit, gets you right back in the zone of where you need to be. And uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of the technique for them. It's been working really well so far. And you know, we could hope that other teams are gonna look into this as they go forward because it seems to be uh, paying dividends for this team. Very, very cool. One thing we will not see, hear, or feel in this second game of the best of three is Dienzio's Vox uh, immediately banned by Liberation X. Yeah, so they pretty much saw the damage coming out of Vox last game. And they know like Vox into that late game, grabbing like two or three tier three items, as long as he's able to position himself correctly, he does so much damage. His ability to actually maneuver last game, his kiting was excellent coming out of them. All right, so we'll have to see. Uh, so we see on Liberation X's side, going back to Black Feather, House and Hammer's Velocity, they counter with Sky. So with Velocity, we see a lot of Sky coming out of them and their play, either Dienzio or Aloha, excellent on that Sky. And with, with them being able to reposition themselves really well, they're able to kind of avoid uh, Black Feather when he dives deep. But for this match, I would really like to see status big on this Black Feather. And hopefully, like, as long as they're able to position themselves really well, I think T Tigers, he can like lead the helm and he can make that difference into that late game. Ooh, humanist. Uh, there's a Taka coming out from Liberation X. We know Taka's very good into a sky. This will be fun to watch. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. I think Taka is one of those heroes that just like brings so much to the table for your team, but it's also super flashy. So it's fun to watch, <laughs> it's fun to play. And maybe we'll see the uh, limited edition skin this time. Yeah, maybe The Night Shadow Taka skin. Maybe they'll uh, indulge us on that. Rome, the comps are filled out. Thoughts, final thoughts on this? I, we have to pay attention to uh, most likely status bake on this Taka this game. Taka is great counter towards Sky, and he's able to dive really deep. But the thing here is, if Velocity team, if they're able to kite backwards, Rhyme actually gets into a really good position where he centers himself between Taka, between Black Feather, and this is where he starts to unleash a lot of damage, especially going against a triple melee composition. And I have to say I'm a little bit surprised that we're seeing quite this much Rhyme. It's kind of developing into a storyline the way that Ozo was. Um, what is it in 115 that makes Rhyme a priority pick? Well, with a lot of melee uh, heroes being played lately and the compositions coming out, like we saw a lot of Ozos being played, and this is the perfect example against Cruel, against Kashka, Talka, Rhyme is the perfect counter pick because he dominates the melee range. Like that proximity where everybody that gets into his circle of damage just gets unleashed on. And if there's one thing in this match, which we'll get to in just a moment, uh, that people at home watching should focus on, what do you think that is? Like we see like on like top competitive play, counter picking has been great. And hopefully like they picked up this Taka just to counter against the sky. We're gonna have to see and watch like as they play it out, if they're able to engage at the right time because Sky, if she uses her Surrey Strike, if she able if she's able to like manipulate them and just dash out and reposition herself, she is gonna hurt the whole team. She has a lot of area of effect damage, and this is where Sky really shines. Uh, it's certainly gonna be fun to watch all of those maneuvers, all of the brinksmanship that we will see in this game. And Humanist, it's so interesting what you were saying about Halcyon Hammers and as an organization prioritizing kind of the, the mental aspect of the game. Yeah. Uh, we did see in the Autumn Live Championships a couple games they got a little bit mentally off track, had a really hard time recovering. I mean, at least Halcyon Hammers in this situation, uh, they are coming into this second match with the one up now. Yeah. But uh, Liberation X on the other side, they do have to mentally regroup. Yeah, but it's so easy to get yourself psyched out in, in this kind of situation. And uh, yeah, you can only hope that Liberation X uh, are drawing on some of those techniques or maybe overheard someone talking about that sports psychology earlier. But yeah, it's really important that they can keep their calm in this situation and hopefully move forward. All right, so with the comp that Liberation X is, is pulling out in this game, talk to me about what uh, T Tigers is gonna be focusing on, what Status Bake's gonna be focusing on. Pretty much like when they're diving deep, they both have uh, gap closers in that side of their kit. But the thing is, they need to be able to prioritize one person and they have to dive them directly. Like we saw last round, they were like poking back and forth, just getting the feel for it and it costed them so much. So as long as they're able to coordinate this out early, I think they can execute on somebody really quick. All right, Liberation X, they are facing defeat here in game two. Uh, it won't knock them out of the tournament, but they certainly want to try to get the blind pick and for the action, it's Action Jackson and Invidious. 
Thank you very much, guys. We're here for the second game of the series. Velocity with an incredible performance in that first game. Vettius moving into the second one. It's going to be interesting to see if Liberation X can you know, bounce back. Yeah, it certainly will be. Liberation X, when we saw them uh, back at the last live championships, they did seem like quite an emotional team. They rided quite a lot off of momentum. Uh, but given that uh, a, a lot of time has passed since then, we'll have to see how well they have developed as a team. You know, uh, status baked in T-Tigers, veterans on the lineup. E36, relatively new, but still been a part of the organization for a while. Status baked needs to be careful, though. He does need to be careful, but obviously he's got the ability to heal up, go stealth, and regenerate a little bit of that. Aloha might be the next target, but with Dienzio roaming down here, we could see a fully three versus three fight. Vayne's taking a lot of damage. Status baked easily able to find that first kill. Kill. Liberation X. They're looking to get the momentum in the second game. Early game Taka, ladies and gentlemen. As a Taka one trick myself, I know all about the power that he has available to him. And if you allow him to build those stacks up, then he's just going to be doing so much damage. He's just consistently kiting around you. And the fact that he can dodge all those abilities at level one is so important because you obviously only have one ability. So if you dodge it, that's it. A large part of your damage is going to be unavailable for velocity. They didn't respect that status. Bake was easily able to kite around the fight. They get the first kill onto veins and it's setting them up for success very early on i mean the big question for me is later on in the game are they just going to be able to blow status baked up you know potentially during a catherine stun with dienzio sky and aloha they can do that i feel like the priority is going to be on to dienzio uh from liberation x they with this taka you're all about trying to just dive onto the back line and kill them as quickly as possible uh, and when you have that black feather complementing that it's just so easy to just uh when you have this Ryan run at you, you can just straight up run past him because he, he relies on you being in melee range. So as long as you can keep him at arm's length, uh, then you're pretty much doing your job. So the ability to dive onto this sky is very, very strong for Liberation X. So I feel like their win condition is let's kill Dienzio as quickly as possible. All right. Well, speaking of killing people, Liberation X are looking to go for this fight in lane. Status Bake taking a decent chunk of damage, though. So they're going to have to back away for now. Dienzio with the support of Veins is going to be fine. Liberation X, aside from that one super early fight, they're not really uh, being too overly aggressive. They're taking their time looking for the best windows of opportunity to go for that aggression. Yeah, they, they really are. They're, they're trying to build themselves up an early lead because you want to try and take advantage of Taka's early strengths. Uh, and by consistently rotating up to the lane and just looking to try and get picks onto Dienzio, it's it's exactly how you set up this Taka for success. So uh, when you have the, the ability to go invisible, it makes it very easy to just rotate into the lane and then you can get a lot of damage down before uh, your opponent is even able to react. But unfortunately, they haven't quite been able to do that. Velocity of Reds, Liberation X is playing quite well. And by keeping Veins up in the lane, it just makes it so much harder for Liberation X to actually collapse down onto Dienzio. I mean, I like what Liberation X is doing off the back of that, though. Although, hang on a second, T-Tigers is kind of caught out here. All three members on top of him. I don't see him getting away from this one without Rose Offensive. And that is going to be a return kill. Going the way of Velocity, they've evened things up here. Yeah, they, they just great collapse there onto T-Tigers. He didn't respect the, the numbers advantage that Velocity he had, he felt like that with two members of Liberation X on the back camps of Velocity, then it would have been easy for them to, for him to just rotate around and provide that support. Uh, it ends up backfiring, he gives away the kill, and now one to one, H, H Velocity are going to be feeling pretty happy. Yeah, I mean, I want to revisit what we were talking about earlier, though, and it's interesting how that fight played out because Liberation X, they maybe thought T-Tigers would be fine because it's harder for Velocity to be aggressive early on. And they decided to go for an invade, which I think is a good plan. You know, if you can't find the early game edge in lane because Veins is constantly covering Dienzio, then yeah, that makes sense. But the problem is it meant that T-Tigers had no support, really. Right now, Dienzio just being a bit of a nuisance up in the lane, but he's got to be careful about the rotate. Look at the damage immediately coming through from Status Baked and T-Tigers. Dienzo has got to be careful about these rotations. Aloha's level 6 now. He does have that Valkyrie. He's actually the highest level in the game. So if Liberation X went for a fight now, it could turn out badly. But they respect it. They don't want to try and force anything right now. So it's going to be back to farming between these two teams. But y you have to also respect the fact that uh, for Liberation X, Th this is the game that they have to really perform. Because Velocity already leading the series. They only need one more win to progress. Uh, and... They, I believe they're actually going to be going up, uh, if they win, they'll be going up against TSM tomorrow. 
Uh, so scary. Yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, the point is, HH Velocity want this win. They don't want to have to go to a game three because they don't want to have to bring anything out that they might be planning for later rounds. You know, so far what we've seen is nothing too unconventional. Sky very popular here in North America. Uh, Rhyme maybe rising a little bit more, but hang on a second. Yeah, we are going to see this fight. T Tiger is getting collapsed on right off the bat, but look at the turnaround on the Dienzio. Massive damage coming out from Status Baked. That's a one for one so far, but who's going to come out ahead? Status Baked should be able to make it out of this one. The stun comes through, though, very well timed right before he can hop back onto the box. Velocity, they take a two for one. So in that fight, you saw how easy it is for Taka to just dive onto the sky, but then also you saw the power of Rhyme into a Taka. When you get into melee range, the fortified health combined with the ridiculous damage that Rhyme can output, especially on patch 1.15 where he's had those buffs, is just so difficult for Ataka. It, just having played that matchup so many times, you're like, why won't you die, old man? Why do you have to be this difficult to kill? Uh, so it, it's kind of a rough matchup for that status baked, and he needs Blackfeather to, to be alive with him if they really plan on killing uh, Rhyme uh, as the game progresses. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the fact that we saw actually what I was talking about maybe happening later in the game, happening so early. A very well-timed stun out of veins is a great way to deal with status baked. Stops him from going into his voice. You've got the damage to pop him during that, he's not really got too much available to him. That said, no reflex block on status bake just yet. He'll be looking to pick that up at some point, I'm sure. And that's the big counterplay. That's the thing that status bake's going to be looking to do to deal with the fact that the stun out of veins can really shut him down. He's actually gone for a very early tension bow. Hasn't even picked up boots yet. <laughs> really prioritizing that early game damage. Looks like he's working towards an uh, aftershock, I believe. So uh, also going to be picking up that, that hybrid sort of build that isn't that unconventional from Ataka. You know, he does have quite good crystal ratios and it just makes his burst damage that much stronger in the early game. Yeah, and also I don't mind the no boots because the thing is with Taka, if you're trying to run away, you go invisible. And it doesn't yeah. really matter how fast you're You also running. get a bit of a movement speed buff yeah. from that as well. So, And in, in, in the same vein, you know, if you're trying to initiate, x who has a decent range, so you can just jump on them instead of running at them. I does, think it's an exchange that I, I think uh, Status Pick will be happy to make in the early yeah, game. It does upset me that they added a bit of a delay Lay on to that x red 2 now. It doesn't feel as snappy. Ooh, hang on, T Tigers gets collapsed. But he's got all of his team here, and actually, Status Pick wants to find the return the damage. Danzio already taking a lot of damage, but he's able to Surrey Strike backwards this time. That alone is going to signal Liberation X to just back off for now and play it cool. Yeah, oh, the status bait. Oh, he gets the, the stealth off. He should be fine. He might actually look for the reinitiation on the Dienzio. He finds that X-Ratsu big damage, but look at the oh. forward barrage. Dienzio is able to pick up the kill, just barely getting out of there alive. And now on the flip side, Aloha and Beans, they're just moving forward, putting some pressure down. Aloha is such a high level right now. Status bait came so close for getting that kill onto Dienzio. He was literally just activating the animation for that A ability, which would have secured him the kill, but he just didn't respect the amount of damage that Velocity had. They were able to shut him down, and what should have really been status bait just disengages. He gets a little bit cocky, gets a little bit greedy, and ends up paying for it with his life. But the gold's still in favor of Liberation X. Yeah, I mean, they're doing a decent job here in other metrics. You know, they, they have done a great job of farming, for example, but now with the fight breaking out, status bait kind of far away. Dienzio might feel more comfortable than he ought to. That's a jump forward right into the Arden Gauntlet, and that is is Dienzio falling down. We've got Status Bait still very healthy on the back line, trying to find the kill. The stealth keeps him healthy for now. Aloha, full health still, but he's one versus three. This is going to be a hard fight for him to win. But look how much fortified health he's gaining. Wow, he is still in this. T-Tiger's got to be careful, does have some heartbreak stacks on him, but is not enough to do the big burst he's looking for. Aloha, quite low on energy, might not be able to keep this up for too much longer. And finally, he goes down. Dienzio respawns in time that that isn't an ace, though. So Liberation X, they find three kills, but not the ace. So at the very end, you have to give credit to how Liberation X played that fight because they realized if we just sit on top of Aloha's face, he will actually be able to kill all three of us. So go in, go out, go in, go out. They knew that the boots on Aloha were on cooldown. He wasn't going to be able to run away from that fight. So as long as they consistently just dive back and forth, it was very easy for them to get that final kill. And as you rightly said, not quite able to secure the ace, but you're really starting to see the burst potential that this Taka has on shutting down 
Dienzio and mad props to E36 for landing a beautiful gauntlet to set him up for that. Yeah, it was a very well placed gauntlet. I want to talk about status baked again for a second actually, because look at this, even for a second item, he still hasn't gotten boots, right? He just has damage upon damage. He's got a lot of burst especially, and that's going to be great at popping the fairly durable Aloha, the fairly mobile Dienzio. Right now, Velocity, though, they're looking to pick up this gold mine. There's no real response from Liberation X. They're still very far away from it. E36 wants to come in, maybe look for the steel, cannot pick it up, though. Tigers. They've got them in a bit of a pincer here. Both sides, Liberation X sitting on them. Status baked, he gets silenced, so he's not going to be able to stealth out of there. And now T-Tigers, extremely deep, doesn't have much support. E36 trying to get there, but he's actually put himself in danger by virtue of doing that. Oh. Dienzio, that camp respawn yeah. could not have been a worse time, <laughs> but I don't see E36 making it out of this one regardless. It is two quick kills and the gold mine picked up for Halcyon Hammer's velocity. So that was just poor coordination from Liberation X. T-Tigers was coming in from the flank, then disengaged. Speaking of T-Tigers... Oh, he's in a bit of a rough spot here, but with that Rose Offensive, might be able to get away. Dienzio could reinforce from the lane, does some nice damage, but not enough to find the kill. Halcyon Hammers are in a nice position to maybe push the turret, though. They have the numbers advantage. You can see Status Baked is just farming the jungle, so unlikely that Liberation X looking to contest this turret. And that's going to be the first big objective going in the favor of Velocity. So once again, building themselves up a very early advantage, but it is still only a small one. The big thing for me is the impact that this Rhyme is having and preventing Taka from really being able to really consistently clean up the team fights. Yes, they're able to shut down Dienzio, but because of the amount of damage that Aloha is doing and how good he is into these triple melee comps, he is just being so effective. He really, really is, and it's definitely something that Liberation X need to keep their eye on when it comes to the draft, maybe moving forward, not falling into that trap. But at the same time, they're by no means out of this one. The gold lead is only about one and a half thousand, which isn't a tremendous hurdle. So Liberation X have opportunities moving forward. Status Baked, you're a Taka guy. How is he going to play these fights as the game progresses a little bit later on? I feel like he could struggle, especially against Aloha. Well... It, it, it's tough. You Obviously, what you want to do is you kind of want to wait for the engage to come out because you can't, you don't really have the ability to just 100 to zero someone, especially when the Fountain of Renewal has been completed. So you kind of want to wait for a bit of damage to go down, maybe wait for a reflex walk to be used, some of the major escapes to be down so that you can just dive into your target and stick to them. But when you have this Black Feather, uh, when you have this Black Feather Taka combo, it's very hard. And Status Bake, he's the one engaging. He is indeed, and he has managed to find the stealth back out. So he's putting Halcyon Hammers in a bit of a weird position. Dienzio trying to stick with his team here. He knows he needs to stay close so that when the melees jump forward, Aloha can oh. save him. Dienzio, he is just microing perfectly around the edge of this fight, but it's not going to be enough. T-Tigers does get the jump forward. It's Aloha and Banes, two versus three. And T-Tigers is doing a great job of keeping them interested on the sidelines. Aloha, very helpful. Healthy still, that's oh, a stun. Oh, nice. big damage coming forward onto status baked. And yet again, E36, the big loser in this situation, having to deal with multiple people by himself, has the boot so and the Vanguard speed up. He's going to be able to get away. Ends up just being that one for one. So Liberation X actually played that fight beautifully because they just, they came in from all three angles. It was first status baked that went in. Then T-Tigers came in from the flank and he started putting pressure down onto Dienzio, who'd already used his escape, and that then forced him into E36, who could be the one to start applying pressure. And it was pretty much a pressure onto Dienzio from all these different angles. And Velocity weren't really sure who to focus. They were there their attention was split onto all three members of Liberation X, and that allowed them to get enough damage down onto Dienzio that they then had the numbers advantage in the fight. But Aloha, being that rhyme, just turned the fight around once again. You had to come into melee range. They used that Catherine stun into the second Winter Spy combo, get themselves a one-for-one, one, and it was just a very well-played fight from really both teams overall. It was well-played from both teams, but Velocity definitely came out a bit ahead, picking up the gold mine off the back of it. And that's, you know, mainly due to Aloha 
God just being so healthy, regardless of everything else that happens in these fights, because Liberation X can't afford to try and burst him down. It just won't work. Uh, it's it's tough. The the rhyme is very tanky. I mean, if you just look at his health, he's actually uh, sitting on 2,300. He's gone for a very early eve of harvest, so he's looking for that sustain, as well as the broken myth. Now he's going to be hitting that much harder, as well as the reflex block. It's just he is just so tanky and so strong at this point that velocity are just going to keep scaling up and they're just going to become a bigger and bigger threat and this taco is just going to start falling off especially with the build that he's decided to go for yeah i'm inclined to agree with you right now velocity definitely kind of bullying liberation x <coughs> forcing the moves in terms of the map rotations that they are making they're able to just walk into a bush and immediately liberation x is like all right let's leave now <laughs> but with the kraken spawning you can see velocity immediately turn their attention to towards that. They're forcing a response. Liberation X can't keep running away if they want to stop this Kraken from going the way of Velocity. That said, Velocity, now that they know they're there, want to try and find a fight. T-Tigers get stunned up multiple times in a row. Immediately wiped out. Great initiation from Velocity. They want to go for E36 here. They've got great damage if they want to find the kill. A forward barrage might come out in just a second. He should be able to get away, but the pressure on the turret, the pressure on Kraken potentially is going to be massive here from Velocity. But they don't need to. They can just push down this turret. They have the positional advantage. Taka's even going for the back camps. We may see Velocity continue their push. They know that the wave clear from Liberation X is actually very weak. It's only E36. And he's actually taking a lot of damage right now. Might not even be able to get away. He's going to gauntlet just to get away from death from above. But an auto attack from Dienzio finds himself the kill. The reflex block gets him away from the gauntlet. But now with T-Tigers and status baked here, members low on velocity. This could be an opportunity to turn things around. Aloha, one versus one of status baked. Veins against Tigers. Aloha is just sustaining so well, but he's low on energy. The sustain from the Eve of Harvest might be the only thing keeping him in this one. Oh, it's so close, uh... but he finds the kill. Now T-Tigers still full hunting down Aloha. He doesn't have a he Rose Offensive, the though, but the on point finds it. There's a jump forward. It's going to be an ace coming through from Liberation X, and you got to admit, Velocity, they just stuck around way too long. Then. They did. There was no need to push on to towards that second tier tower. You knew that Status Baked was going to be going to base. You knew that T-Tigers was going to be respawning, uh, and putting all that emphasis onto trying to shut down your support is just not what you really want to be doing. You dive under a tower, you put yourself at a compromising position that allow Liberation X to basically, ver I want to say easily, but it wasn't that easy, especially when we saw the 1v1 between Aloha and Status Bait. Things were very difficult for Status Bait, but still, Liberation X overall get themselves the ace, but it was a hard fought battle. It was a very hard fought battle, and Status Bait, he was just softening him up, man, so that his uh, his teammate could come and pick up the kill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, or at least that's what I'm sure he wishes people thought. <laughs> he was definitely going for it, but Aloha, super strong right now. Velocity, with all of the map pressure from picking up two turrets, might be able to leverage that into a good map position for a Kraken. We'll have to see if they can find that. In terms of the wards, or rather the scout traps placed on the map right now, they do have very good vision to try and leverage and go for an objective like that. And they certainly do. Looking at Liberation X, though, they're trying to keep the minion waves pushed towards Velocity so that they can gain the map advantage. They can start putting a bit of vision down for themselves, but... There's actually very little vision coming out from Liberation X. Uh, oh, as I say, that four scout traps just picked up for <laughs> E36. So they're going to be regaining that vision. Velocity, they want to fight, though. Yeah, you can see Status Bake trying to find Dienzio, but look at the burst damage. It seems like every single fight, three stuns go on to one person, and they just get wiped out. Look at this, T-Tigers. He can't find Dienzio. He's having to fight Aloha, not the target he wants. E36 desperately trying to get at least some kind of prize for his team, but I don't see him getting it. It is easily an ace picked up for velocity and they're gonna get the Kraken off the back of it. Big team fight for them. They want to win this series 2-0. They certainly do. You saw the flare come out from Velocity. They knew exactly where T-Tigers was. All of their stuns came down on top of him and there was absolutely nothing that he could do. He doesn't even have a reflex block yet. He couldn't use the Rover Rose offensive in time. He gets collapsed on and with T-Tigers out of the fight, well, you just don't really have that late game damage. I mean, just look at his item. Shiver Steel, Tornado Trigger, a serpent's mask he is pretty much all of the damage for liberation x at this point in the game and if you allow him to die that quickly there is no way you're going to turn the fight around so very smart play from velocity they get the ace they get the crack in and now they're looking to try to break the base of liberation x 
Yeah, and this would be a massive win for Velocity coming through. I mean, they were the higher seed on paper, but Liberation X have that title to their name from the previous championship, so it's got to feel great putting up a good performance against them. Liberation X on the flip side, for the sake of their honor, they need to defend this title, and it doesn't look like they're going to be able to do it too easily. They've got a huge uphill battle if they want to come back into the game. Right now, T-Tigers goes for D'Enzio. They want to find the big fight, but D'Enzio kiting back and forth through his team onto Aloha, making space for him to do the damage. T-Tigers is going to go down. The Silence is going to oh. land on the E36 as well. So far, a one versus one trade, but E36 falls. The Kraken still extremely healthy. I don't see any way for Status Bank to defend here. Velocity, they come out with a massive win against Liberation X in this series. Well, it certainly looks that way. Status Bank doing what he can to try and keep the Vein Crystal alive, but it's not going to be enough. Velocity take the series 2-0. Man, a big entrance to Halcyon Hammer's Velocity 